Hey folks, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Tim, and just over two and a half years ago, I converted to Islam. So before I came to Islam, um, I was not really practicing any kind of religion. I had been raised in a Christian setting, uh, Protestant, um, leaning towards Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Baptist in upbringing. Truly, I was it was non-denominational that my family was, um, but we went back and forth between many different churches when I was a kid. Um, which was good because it exposed me to a lot of different variation in belief. Uh, and I had many friends of different understandings. I did not remain Christian, and this was due to a number of reasons. Primarily being that I did not feel that there was truly a love in Christianity. So, um, I left Christianity, looked at pursuing Judaism for a little while, but ultimately decided to be on my own and be kind of an agnostic, someone who believed in God, but who uh, didn't really have any form of practice. That was how I identified for many years. And Eventually, it led to a place where I was extremely depressed. And I'll go into more detail about that in future videos. But it was not a pleasant place to be. Ultimately, I came to the decision that I needed to find a spiritual practice that resonated with me that confirmed to what I believed and held to be truths from my previous upbringing in Christianity and understandings that I had gained from other religions. Um, I wanted something tangible, something that had good formal practice to it, because uh, I felt that was necessary. And I came searching with really three core tenets that I believed were necessary for true religious practice. These were beliefs in one God. Um, in my Hebrew class, we learned the Shema, which is like the statement of faith in Judaism. It's from the book of Deuteronomy. Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad Va'ahavta et Yahweh Eloheinu Wakal Lavavka Inshallah, I'm not butchering that pronunciation, but uh, it translates as, listen, Israel, speaking to the entire nation, Yahweh, the Lord, is your God. He's one. And you are to love Yahweh the Lord, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all your mind. It's an all-encompassing religion of love that we find. And so uh, this was important to me. Um, but this is the belief in one God, one loving God. And beyond that, I had a belief in prayer, that prayer was a very powerful thing, um, that it was a form of communion with our Creator, with God, and that it had to be done in a specific way, namely through standing and through frustration, and through reciting scripture. These were things that I found 
were important in practice from the Hebraic perspective, I guess you could say. Um, there's a word that uh, the psalmist uses, uh, selah, usually untranslated in English, but the word means to prostrate, and this was very important to me, that the position of prostration was fundamental to respect and honor and glorification due to divinity, to God. And the third thing was a belief in fasting, that fasting was an important mode utilized in seeking truth. Um, that it, it was done as an example by prophets. Moses, he fasts when he goes up on the mountain. Elijah fasts when he's seeking God. Jesus fasts um, in the Gospels. So with those three things, the belief in the oneness of God, the belief in prayer, formalized prayer, and the belief in the practice of fasting, uh, with those three things, I decided that I should look at Islam. And the reason I chose Islam was because for being in a state of depression, I felt hopeless. I felt like I had no other place to turn. And I'd always had nagging at the back of my head the thought that, Tim, one of these days you need to look at Islam, see what it's really about. Once I finally found Muslims talking about their own religion, it did not take long. Within a matter of a couple weeks, really, um, I was able to discover that Islam confirmed everything that I had believed previously regarding the oneness of God, fasting, prayer. Uh, not only did they confirm it, but they facilitated a space and a practice where these things could be done better uh, for for betterment of this of oneself spiritually. Um, and it was so clear to be able to see this that it just blew me away. And at that point, the question was to me was, okay, well, what does Islam have to say about love? Um, we, we all know and would, would say that uh, God is love. Describing love itself is maybe a little bit more complex, um, a little too close to describing reality itself. But we all have a good idea of what love is. And I very much wanted to know what Islam had to say about this, because to me, this was the thing that was lacking in religions, is they could begin to describe love, but their description always seemed lacking to me. And again, what I found in Islam did not only confirm, but it was so much more deep and powerful than anything I had ever known before. Yet at the same time, it confirmed everything inside of me that felt like, I, like I said, I had like this, I don't know if I want to call it innate knowledge, but an idea of what I knew had to be truth. I knew it was out there, but I wasn't finding it anywhere until I came to Islam. And that was the most beautiful thing. So love in Islam is 
what I want to talk about, and I think it's the most important thing. So the Quran opens up, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And this statement is repeated over and over again, really in every surah, every chapter. And the, the two words, Rahman and Rahim, come from the same root, Rahm, which is a word that is familiar to Hebrews as well. Rahum uh, is the Hebrew root. And this word means more than really I could even try to explain, but it is the merciful uh, merciful love, the the love that has absolutely nothing to do with oneself, that is completely um, outside of itself, that it, it, it is it's describing the root of the word is talking about a mother's love, a uh, very feminine type, but in a parent, either male or female can understand this, but women more connected to it because it's describing the womb, the innate love that a mother will have for a child, um, a protective, a guardian, a forgiving no matter what has been done. This is the type of love that you find discussed word for word identically in the Hebrew scriptures. This is the type of love you have Jesus in the Gospels talking about in probably the most famous parable of his, the parable of the prodigal son. This is the true love of God and seeing this in Islam was more powerful to me than anything because it, it was like I said it was what I already believed but beyond that it was something that I saw realized see in other religions you you have this notion that, okay, well, yeah, maybe this love exists and it's out there, but it's only from God. We, we can't attain that level, and we shouldn't attain that level, and maybe God himself doesn't really uh, use that method all the time. Um, so we like to think that there's something that has to be done in order for us to attain the love. And it is true. Um, we have to accept it. Uh, this is the perhaps the best definition of what Islam actually means. You have Islam translated often as uh, peace or as uh, surrender, uh, but I think perhaps acceptance is truly the best way to explain the word because when one is in a state of peace one is then also in a state of submission or surrendering and those two combined is a form of acceptance of something acceptance of reality is what it is because we have the statement in islam which is really a statement that is all throughout hebrew scripture as well uh, in Arabic, it's La ilaha illallah. There is no God but except, uh, there's no God except God. Uh, it's often how it's translated in English. And God himself is what we would say like love. Um, so you can put that into the same statement as well. There is no love except love, uh, the true love um, from God, of God, 
that is God. So, this is a very powerful thing. And for me being in a state of depression, where my thoughts were very much wrapped up in things of, oh, such and such happened and it's making me feel such and such a way. Or I have to do X to attain Y. Um, like I have to do something in order to be happy or not depressed anymore. This is the mentality I was at and I knew it wasn't getting me anywhere. But to be honest, this is the mentality that most people in the world are coming from, at least at some point in their life. And to understand that the love of God is really there waiting for you, and there's absolutely nothing that you have to do to achieve it. It's unconditional. That's the word I was looking for unconditional love. This is the love of God in Islam. This is the love that I found and it's the love that transformed my life. And I couldn't be happier for it today. Everything else, like I said, the the prayer, the fasting, the belief in the oneness of God. The belief in the oneness of God is really what gets you into understanding more about God. <clears throat> Everything else is, is the extra, it's the worship, is what it is. Uh, when you understand who God is, and this unconditional love that comes from God, then what can you do but be in a complete state of worship. Always. You know, I had a, a pastor when I was younger who had this really cool statement that I've heard word for word from so many Muslims in the last couple of years. And it's... <clears throat> If we, I, I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase because I don't remember exactly how he, he phrased it, but it's on the order of we always need to be doing everything that we do for God and in love to him, never being attached to the results. And do everything for God. Don't be attached to the results. And always do it because we love God. That's the only thing that really matters in life. And when you understand that, that is when the overwhelming peace comes. And it's such a blessed thing. And that's the transformative tool right there. It's through love. And I'm more than grateful that I found it. Um, and it's the reason why I'm eventually here, uh, that it's the reason why I'm sharing this with you, is because when love enters into one's heart, it is something that has to be, it can't be contained inside, uh, it has to come out. So, may the peace and love and blessings of God be with you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.